Welcome. In this session, I would like to explain to you how to use Windows PowerShell to connect and query MySQL Server. Before I start, I need to make sure that you have the following. You need a MySQL Server with credentials that allow you to access the server. You will have to install the MySQL.NET connector, which can be found at the following location. You will need to have a full understanding on how to work with variables, how to handle errors in Windows PowerShell. If you are unsure or you would like to refresh your memory, please view one of my earlier sessions. If your MySQL Server instance is not on your local computer, the first thing that we need to do is to allow access to our database from a remote computer. Connect to your MySQL instance and create a user that will have remote access. We can do so by using the create user, then specifying the name of the user in quotes, then an add symbol, and then a percentage symbol, which specifies that the user will log in from a different computer. Of course, you can limit access to a specific host by adding an IP address or a DNS name. Identify by will allow you to add a password to the user. Once we have created the user, we can check to see if the user is created by selecting host and user from the mysql.user database. Then we need to grant access for the user we can look at the access rights with show grants for. Then to allow the access, we can use grant all on database dot star to our user identified by password. And then add the hash string we were able to see when we ran the show grants command. Now that we have remote access to the MySQL server, we can use PowerShell to import the MySQL connector into our PowerShell session with the following command. We type the word void in square brackets, followed by system.reflection.assembly in square brackets, followed by two colons, then load with partial name and the name mysql.data in round brackets and quotation marks. Now that we have the assembly loaded, we can start querying our MySQL server. The first thing we need to do is to create a connection to the server. To be able to connect to MySQL server, we need to have a connection string. With that connection string, we can create a connection object, which with that we can open a connection to the server. Once we have a connection, we can create a query string to select information from the MySQL server. With the query string, we need to create a command object. Since we are using a select statement, we need to create a data adapter object, which we can then use to create a data set object. With the data set object, we can close the connection to our MySQL server and keep working without being connected to the MySQL server. There are ways to manipulate the data set object and write back the changes to the MySQL server. But I will show you an easier way to modify data in our MySQL server. The connection string that we will need to connect to our MySQL instance will have to consist of the following components. The DNS name or IP address of the server. The port if the server does not use the default port 3306. The name of the database we would like to connect to. The user that has been granted access to use the database. And the password to connect to the MySQL instance. We should store the connection string in a variable. 
they will look like this. The server will have our server DNS name or the IP address, the port that the MySQL server is using, the database name, the username needs to be set to the UID, and the password needs to be set to PWD. Make sure that you add a semicolon after each setting. To open a connection to MySQL Server, we will create a connection variable with a new object mysql.data.mysqlclient.mysqlconnection. We will then add the connection string to the connection object as shown here. Once we've done that, we can open the connection to our MySQL server with the open method that is available in the connection object. To close the connection to the MySQL server, we can use the close method in the connection object. The query string that we will store in a query variable will need to have the select statement for the information we would like to retrieve from MySQL Server. Now that we have an open connection to the MySQL Server and we have our query string, we can create a command variable with a new object of the type mysql.data.mysqlclient.mysqlcommand and specify our query and our connection object within round brackets. The .NET connector for MySQL Server is designed to collect information in a dataset. To be able to create the dataset, we first need to create a data adapter object, which we will store in a new object variable of the type mysql.data.mysqlclient.mysqlDataAdapter. We will have to specify the command object in round brackets. Now that we have the data adapter, we need to create a dataset object of the type system.data.dataset. We can then fill the dataset object with the fill method that is available in the data adapter object. We need to specify our dataset object and then a name that we would like to give for the source table. In our case, we will call it data. Here, we could also add an integer for the start record and an integer for the maximum numbers of records that will be stored in the dataset. The method will output a number of rows that have been affected by our query. Therefore, it might be a good idea to store this in a count variable. Theoretically, we could close the connection to the MySQL server now and keep working with the dataset object without having an open connection to the MySQL server instance. To view the information that has been written to the dataset, we can call the tables property within the dataset object. If we would like to limit the output to a certain table or row or column, we can use square brackets to specify the index of the information we would like to see. The index of 0 will show the first table in the dataset. The index of 0 for the rows will also show the first row of data in the dataset. We can filter the data even more by specifying the column name property of the row that we would like to have selected. As mentioned before, we could use the dataset object to manipulate data and save the information back to the MySQL server using the data adapter. But there is an easier way to do this, with a method that was specially designed for non-select queries. To be able to use update, insert, delete, create, alter or drop queries, we need our connection string. 
we need our connection object, we need a query string, that will need to be set to a command object. Now that we have a command object, we can use the execute non-query method within the command object to execute the query on the MySQL server instance. Here is an example on how to the run the execute non-query method with a delete statement. We create a query string variable with the delete statement. Then we create a command object variable with the query string and the connection variable. Now using the execute non-query from our command object variable, we can execute the delete statement on the MySQL server. If we would like to execute an aggregation statement, we can use a method that was specially designed for the command that returns only a single value. Again, we need a connection string, we need a connection object, we need a query string, we need a command object, and we can use the execute scalar method to return a single value. Here is an example for a select count query. Again, we can create our command object from our query and command objects. Then we can execute the execute scalar method from the command object to get our value. If we need to work with parameters that need to be passed to a select query or a stored procedure, there are two ways of doing this. The first way is to use the at symbol in our query and specify the name of the parameter. We then need to call the add with value method that is within the parameter property within the command object variable. We need to specify the at symbol with the name of the property followed by the value that we would like this property to have. The second way is to use the question mark symbol to specify the parameter in our query string. The only difference to the first option is that we only need to specify the name of the property without any further symbols before it. Both of these work and it's up to you which one you would like to use. To create and alter stored procedures, we again need all the components for the command object. With the command object, we can use the execute non-query method to run our query. Here is an example of a create procedure statement. We then create a command object variable and use the execute non-query method to execute the query. If we would like to execute or call our stored procedure, we can use any one of the command object methods, execute non-query, execute scalar, or create a dataset to execute the query. This really depends on what your procedure is set up to do. Here is an example on how to call or execute a stored procedure. With the query string, we create a command object. With the command object, we create a data adapter object. With the data adapter, we create a data set object. We then fill the data set object with the fill method from within the data adapter object. If our procedure is set up to return more than one table, from the database, we can use the count property to see how many tables were returned. And then we can use the tables property to show us the data for the specific table, in this case, the second table in the dataset, which will have an index of 1. 
To create a function, we need all the components to run the execute non-query method within the command object variable. Here is an example of a create function statement. To execute a function, we should again use the method that was designed for its specific purpose or create a dataset if we need to have lots of data returned by a query. Here is an example for executing a function called hello. Since the output of this command will only return one, one value, we can use the execute scalar method. Okay, let's wrap this up with a couple of examples in PowerShell ISE and MySQL. To allow access for a remote computer to access the MySQL database, we will first of all create that user and then give him rights to access the database. To do that, I'm connecting to the MySQL database. Now that I've connected to the database and I have used a user that has enough privileges to create users, I can use the command create user. We are creating the user called PowerShell and the add symbol just shows you it from which computer you will have access. The percentage sign specifies that he has access from anywhere and we give him the password my password. Okay, now that we have that user, we can just see if that actually was created by running the select user, host from MySQL users where username is PowerShell. And as you can see, the user has been created and he has access from anywhere. Okay, now that we have given him access or created the user, we can just look at the grants, which access rights he already has. And you can see he has usage rights, but that will not be enough to connect to a database. So we are going to give him grant all on my database and then the username with the percentage sign and then identified by the password. And for the password, we need to take our hash string, that is this string here, and copy that into the command. All right, now that we've done that, we have a user called PowerShell that has remote access to a database called My Database. Okay, um, back in PowerShell, we are going to create a couple of variables. We will set a variable for our MySQL user, for the MySQL password. Then we're gonna set a variable for the database, in this case, MySQL. And we're gonna set a variable for the server that we're going to connect to. All right, I've just finished installing the .NET connector for MySQL. To import the assembly, we are going to call void. Then we call system reflection assembly. Then we specify two colons, load with partial name, and then MySQL data. All right, now that we have imported the assembly, we can create a connection and we're gonna use the new object commandlet and specify MySQL, then data, MySQL client, and MySQL connection. All right, if you do not get an error message, you have successfully imported your assembly. And if you do get an error message, you may need to make sure that your installation of the .NET connector is working properly. I would suggest reinstalling it. Okay, up next, we are going to create a command, uh, sorry, a connection string variable, which consists of the server, then the port, 
If you're using a different port than 3306, you need to specify that here. The database that we are going to connect to, the username and the password. All right, now that we have a connection string variable, we are going to set this to our connection string property that is within the connection object. And then we are going to call the open method to open a connection to our MySQL server. Okay, now that we are connected, we can query the server and we are going to call a select statement to get all the users that are in the MySQL user database. We'll set that to a string variable. Then we are going to create a command object with the new object commandlet, specifying MySQL data, MySQL client, and then MySQL command. We need to specify the query and the connection. All right, with that connection, we can create a data adapter, and we are using the new object commandlet with mysql.data, mysql client, and mysql data adapter. And we need to specify our command variable. Okay, now that we have a data adapter, we can create a data set, and we're gonna use new object commandlet. This time we're gonna specify system, data, and data set. All right, with our data set, we can now fill the data set with the um, data adapter that we've created and calling the fill method. We need to specify the data set that we would like to fill and give the data set a name. I'm also setting a record count variable. This way you could track how many records were read or changed if or affected while you were running the script. To execute or to see how many it were, it were 11 records were affected. Another way to do that, we can call our data set object with the property table and call the count property. This will also return how many tables are in our data set. So we've got one table but we had 11 records that were selected into the data set. Okay, we can see how many rows are in our data set by calling or calling the tables property. Within that is the rows um, property and then the count property for that. And you will see that we have 11 rows in the table in the data set. All right, now if we would like to see our user information, I am going to call the user information, let's say we, ju we just want to call this for the user 10. And if I execute that, we can see that user 10 is the root user. All right, <clears throat> another way, or if we would like to view the host information, we can again call our data set, call the tables property with specifying zero. That means that it's the first table in our data set. We are calling row number 10 and we would like to see the host information for that. So if I execute that, you can see that the percentage means that the host is from anywhere. All right, up next I will demonstrate to you how to create a database using the execute non-query um, method that is within our command object. First of all, we're going to create the query. The query is create database mydb. With the um, query, we are going to use our connection that we've previously generated. We're going to use the um, query and we're going to create a command object from that. Now with the command object we can call the execute non-query method within that to create our database. If I execute that we'll see one record 
was affected and it has created our database. Now, to, if we would like to just call any other command that is not a select statement, we can, for example, use that database. Um, so we query that, we then connect it to a command and then execute the command. All right, I'm using the my underscore db now. All right, if we would like to create a table in our newly created database, we can do that again by using the execute non-query. I'll specify my query up here. We're gonna create a table called animals and it has an ID field with int and it should not be null and it's an auto increment field. We are going to have a name, which is a car character field of 30, which should not be zero, and is a primary and a primary key is the ID field. So that is our query. To execute the query, we will again set the query with the connection to a command and then execute the query on our database. All right, now that we have created a table, we could select from the table, but I would like to show you how to insert um, information. And again, we're gonna use the execute non-query to do that. So we are going to insert values into our animals database, uh, sorry, table, and the names will be dog, cat, penguin, lax, whale, and ostrich. All right, again, that is our query, and then we can execute our query like that. All right, we have written six rows into our database. Okay, now, if we notice we've made a mistake, we can run an update query and we will set our update query to have, instead of set the name mouse, where the name was lax. So we will set that as our query. And again, we will execute the query by using the execute non-query method. All right, now we have changed the names. All right, if we wanted to delete a row in our database, we can use the delete statement and we're gonna set it to delete from animals where name is whale. That is our query and then we will execute our query. All right, now that we have, I've showed you how to insert, update and delete, we are again going to, I'll show you again how to select statements if we would like to select we should create a data adapter and a data set so first of all we are going to set our um, select statement oh yeah as you can see we are actually using parameters so in this case we are using the at, sign, at symbol as a parameter and we specifying the id as an at parameter then we are creating our command. Now that we have our command, we can use the parameters property and the add with value uh, method. And then we need to specify the add ID. We're gonna set it to three. That will give us the third row. And then where the ID is three, sorry. And then we're gonna set a data adapter from our command. And now that we have our data adapter, we can create a data set and we fill, we'll fill our data set. We have one row affected and if I execute or if I look at what is in my data set, tables, rows, you will see that we have penguin returned to us since we were asking for only the ID or the parameter was specified as three, which mentioned that ID should be three, and that's where the information comes from. 
All right, again, we can do exactly the same with using the question mark. We need to specify the question mark before the information that we would like to get or the parameter. So this is our parameter. Then we again set our query to our command. We will then, instead of putting the at, at symbol, we don't need to put anything there. We just use it like that. That will create our parameter. And then we can just execute the information and we will again see that ID number three is penguin. All right, um, to, I would like to show you how to run aggregation. Um, with execute scalar, that is the method that we will call. So we're gonna set our query string to select count star from animals. So it should count how many animals we have and then we are creating our command object with the query string and the connection string. And then we're gonna execute our execute scalar method. And since only one value is returned, it will display that five records are in our work from that query. All right, up next, I will demonstrate to you how to create a procedure. To create a procedure, we are going to use the execute non query, and then to call the query, we're going to use the execute scalar. Okay, this will be our query string, we're going to say create procedure, we'll call it my routine. We're going to select the name from animals and order by name and we're going to count the name from animals. So it's two queries that are running at the same time and then to execute that or to create the procedure we are going to call the execute non query. This will create the procedure now we can call the procedure by <coughs> specifying call then my db my routine if, if we since we're using my db this is not really necessary but i just put it in <coughs> to show you the difference and again we are going to create our command then we're going to create a data set and a data adapter Oops, I actually forgot to create my data adapter. So I'm just going to copy that and create my data adapter from our command. Otherwise, our my demonstration would not work. Then I can create a data set. Now that I've got my data set, I can fill my data set using my data adapter and the full method and you see five rows were, were affected if i execute this you can see that we have two tables written into our database or sorry to our data set but i would like to see our first table i can do that by just calling the index zero and if I would like to see my second index or my second table, I can do that by specifying the index one. All right. And as you can see, we had our select name from animals written into the first table. And then the select count name from animals written into the second table. All right. Up next, I'll demonstrate to you how to create a function and then execute the function. Again, we're gonna use the execute non query to create it and then the execute scalar to call the function. All right, our query string is create a function. The function name is hello. And then s as a character returns character 50 and so on. And it should concat, this is our query. All right, now that we have set our query, we again need to create our command object. 
using the query and the connection. And I will just execute the query. This creates a function called hello. Now to call the function, we are going to set our query to select hello world. And I will execute that. And now to call that query, we're going to use execute scalar, which is designed to only return one row of data. And as you can see, since we only, only got one row, it will return hello world. That's what the function was meant to do. All right, up next I'll show you how to drop a table or drop a function. Drop a function with our execute non-query. We are going to set our query to drop hello. And we're going to execute the query to drop that function. All right, up next I'll show you how to drop a table. Uh, this is actually how to drop a procedure. Oops, okay, so we would like to drop a procedure and we're gonna, again, you're gonna use the execute non-query. So we set our query to drop the procedure routine and then execute it to drop the, the, the procedure. If we would like to drop a table, again, we do the same. We just create a query with, that states drop table animals and we execute that to drop the table. If we would like to drop a complete database, we do exactly the same as we did before. Specify drop database, my DB, and then execute the non-execute non-query method. All right, this actually almost um, shows you how to use MySQL or PowerShell to connect to MySQL. One thing that you should always do is to use a try, catch, and finally block. The way to do this is to specify try, then you have all your information. In the catch phrase, you can say, please tell me why it's not working. And then in the finally state you sh or block, you should close your connection, which we are going to do now. This will close the connection to our MySQL server. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the session and I'm looking forward to our next one.